Welcome to the Hollywood Outsider, an award-winning weekly entertainment podcast. In this episode, we're not actually here because of the holiday week, but we are revisiting a topic from the past and also kind of to show what our show is with our weekly topic. And we're going to debate TV's most controversial season finales. It feels like the perfect time because this is the time of year when you get TV season finales. So what we have here is myself, Aaron Peterson, my fellow co-host, Troy Heinrichs, and Amanda Sink from a little bit in the past, debating some of the most controversial series finales of all time, including Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Dexter, Battlestar Galactica, The Sopranos, Seinfeld, How I Met Your Mother, Game of Thrones, The Shield, and Lost. Hope you guys enjoy this and come back next week where we take a little trip in a time machine. Let's get on with the show. All right, we talked about TV series finales in the past. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the most controversial TV series finales. We're going to debate the pros and cons and decide definitively, definitively if the most controversial TV series finales were worthy of all the episodes that preceded them. So we're each going to, we have nine total. We have six that were the top six of listener picks. We did a poll in our Facebook group and we took the top six most controversial TV series finales and then we added our own personal three. I'm not going to tell you which is which. You're just going to figure that out as we go. But here's what we're going to do. We're going to tell you what happened. So beware of spoilers. They're, all the shows are over a few years old. So, I mean, there's nothing. Well, Game of Thrones is in there. Game of Thrones is yeah, in Game there. Game of Thrones would be the, the probably the newest one. Everything else is a few years or more. But if you're conscious of spoilers, shut it off because we're going to tell you exactly how the show ended. Like literally exactly how it ended. Then the person that has that particular show is going to give a, a short case for the ending that we got and a case against the ending that we got. And then we're all three going to vote on if, that ending worked for the show ultimately or not. It's like a mini battle royale. Everybody understand? Yep. Oh, sweet. I'm ready to nine things instead of eight. I think some of these are going to go easy and some of these are going to be a fight. So I'm kind of curious where we end up. Fight, fight, fight. Now, we have our roll call. We have our order and everything else. Mandy, you get to start it off. What's our first TV series finale? None other than Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Shocked. Into every generation, a slayer's born. She alone must face against the vampires, the demons, and the forces of darkness. She is the slayer. The show's gonna, elegant. Wait, hey, hey, are you going to tell us about the show, or you just you just felt I'm like I'm gonna? You, that's the overview. Finally, finally. You're supposed to tell us about the finale, not the first episode. I'm getting there. Finally, I'm getting I got there. to say it. I've wanted to say it my whole life publicly. I finally got. I to have say been it. saying it my whole life publicly. All right, continue. To Creed, every time she wakes up in the mirror. <laughs> True that. And then I go to bed by using the Boondock Saints Creed. So the show's elegant metaphor that growing up as hell was rich territory for the trials that adolescents faced. After Buffy thanks Angel with a smooch for delivering the amulet she needed, Buffy finds her sister Dawn at home despite her best efforts at shipping her off to safety. Spike confronts Buffy on her kissing of Angel, and after reconciling, she is visited by the first who taunts whose taunts give Buffy an idea of how she and her army can defeat the vert, the first minions. Ultimately, Buffy defies the order of only one slayer per generation by having Willow perform a spell that awakens all of the potential slayers and gives them their powers in the midst of this massive battle. Spike sacrifices himself to save everyone, which causes the Hellmouth to cave in and everyone to run for their lives. Buffy tells Spike she loves him. He says, no, you don't. Ouch. <laughs> and he dies down there. Many people die that day, but most of the original Scooby Gang survives and Buffy gets a chance at a new life. There's your synopses. Mm -hmm. The case for the ending, four, meaning good. The finale allows Buffy to be free without sacrificing herself once more like she did in season five. She finally gets to live her life as she sees fit and not at the hands of a power in life she had zero control over. Her sister best friends, and mentor all make it out alive, giving a more happy ending to Buffy's conclusion. Now the case against the ending. Mm. While Buffy does come up with the idea of surviving, Spike stole the glory by sacrificing himself and saving the world. It provides redemption to a character that has done some truly awful things like attempting to rape Buffy before he reacquired his soul. Given that Buffy was also regarded as a feminist show promoting feminist ideals, 
It can also be argued that it takes away the original notion of this powerful gleam of women when the first Slayer was forced powers on her by men and that the men ends up the man ends up saving the world ultimately. Mm. So what'd you guys feel about this finale for Buffy? I know you guys are both fans. It sucked. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my entire life, to be quite honest. So you're, really? you're that pa- I thought you were just joking at first. No. You're very passionate about this. I love no. it. No, if, if the entire concept that they were trying to go for was that she didn't have to be the Slayer anymore and all these potentials could be Slayers, the way you do that is by putting it in your own hands. She should have taken the crystal. She should have closed the hell mouth. She should have died. And by doing that, it awakens the powers and everybody else. That would have been amazing. But mm-hmm. no, you have this random dude who raped her. And then he's the one that gets all the glory from taking it. And then he shows up later, two more seasons afterwards, an angel after the fact. Like, screw that. I hate Spike. Spike sucks. Who? I like the passion. I like James Marsters, but I hate Spike. Yeah, I like the character of Spike, but I don't like what they did with the character of Spike. How's that? Yeah. Mm, no, that's good. That's a better way of saying it. Man, I... I, I, no, I no, I hate Spike. Hmm. I hate Spike. I, you know what bugs <laughs> me? And I've had this conversation with a man about that finale. The fifth season finale was a perfect series finale. Absolutely it was perfect. amazing. Perfect series finale. And they blew their wad on that one. Like That's really what happened. They came back for two more years. And then I, I don't disagree with anything Troy said. And it's not often you guys don't understand. You probably if you don't listen to our other shows, but I don't agree. Home with, off opening right now because we agree. Yeah, we don't agree on a lot. That's what I definitely agree with. So I, I'm I guess it's my vote because I just was very, very frustrated with how that ended especially because it should have led to her death. I would have been fine with her dying again, honestly, as long as that's what led to the awakening of the Slayers. The way that they were awakened, I just thought was a cop-out almost. Yeah. Hey, hey, best friend who's not supposed to use magic, could you go use magic for me so that I can make everybody else like me? Dumb. Yeah, I, I was also bothered by that because for those who don't know or remember, Willow went into a very, very, very dark place the last time she used magic this this intensely and this yeah. was more powerful than the last time that she had to use her magic and ultimately becoming a dark witch and was like going around and murdering people that was great i love that <laughs> aspect like seriously it was that, so good <laughs> yeah that part was really cool in the show but yeah it's like an addict, friend, it's like telling an addict <laughs> it's like you're reformed but here go be an addict again <laughs> because i need you to do that for me yeah and right. for everybody else and then just to have spike basically because it didn't matter about the Slayers being awakened at that point because Spike decided to do what he did. So it was really that was more of an effect for after mm-hmm. everything was closed down to release her mouth. from her to, obligations. Yes. Yeah. And right. it should have been to me that is granted she does have more of a choice now. She still didn't have a choice over that. Like she, to me, it it just was not the most feminist way to conclude a such a powerful and damn good story that was otherwise perfect. And I agree with Aaron. The season five finale was perfect. There is no way that they could have improved from that, but they could have at least done better than just the sl- slaughter of the last season in general, and they had an opportunity to redeem it, and they just really, really failed. So yeah. it's very disappointing. Well, it feels like we got three votes against it. It's not feeling very controversial right now, but I know there are people who <laughs> didn't mind it, the, okay? Hey. And people who love Spike that loved that ending because of it. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was fun when he was on Angel, too. I mean, so I, I'm not... Dis- I like the character. I just... It's where he belonged. He was on Angel. I agree. Whole time. He was, he was an overall really, really great character, aside from the random turn of event where he tried to rape her. That was just so weird. Like, that was... That was un- so weird. Yeah, it just was so un- character, out of character for him, and... I mean, granted, th- is there really a character for people who do horrible things like that? No, but... The way they presented sure. him, he loved her too much to do that. And he gets redeemed by getting his soul back. Yeah. And then he gets redeemed again by sacrificing himself. And now he's this glorious man for doing the world the good deed. I don't know about that. Angel never really took him seriously. So even even after he, ah, he sacrificed yourself for the world. That's cool. <laughs> you're, still, you're still that idiot. All right. So Buffy, thumbs down, right? Down. Yep. Down. Okay. All right, well, mine is The Shield, is the first one. Vic Mackey was a dirty cop leading the strike team and was trying to stay one step ahead of the law the entire time. 
Basically, in the series finale, Vic serves up his strike team to secure a deal for himself, because, you know, they were dirty, where he will work from a desk as an ICE member. A desk job for the hard-charging, explosive Vic Mackey. Like, that's horrible punishment. Then, at the last minute of the, of the series, he picks up his gun and he heads out. To what, we don't know. If, if he gets involved in the streets again, he will go to jail. But he's just one of those guys that can't stop getting himself in it. He keeps putting himself in the middle of things. So the case for the ending. Vic Mackey is an awful human being. Awful. And while jail is really what he deserved, many people thought, he made a deal. And this ending honors that deal. What is more punishing than Vic being stuck at a desk? This guy hated being at a desk. Like, this is the perfect punishment. He loses his family to Witsec. And then he's forced to watch other cops do real cop work. And he lost his chance because he's dirty. Now, the case against this ending is Vic Mackey himself. I mean, the guy's killed cops. He's framed suspects. He's done a million other horrible things. Has he done some good? Sure. Yeah, here and there. I mean, the task, the, the strike team did some good. But he's an awful dude. Absolutely. Fans wanted him either in prison or dead. And this finale gave them neither. So that is my description of The Shield. What do you guys think in terms of this solution for the horrible Vic Mackey? That one's a, a, a bit of a toss up in some ways, because you if you think about it, if you take it personally, you're like, ah, anybody who is despicable and kills people should definitely be imprisoned or should be killed. But on the other hand, it happens. Deals are made. And he's not living the life that he wants to be living. He lost, like Aaron said, he lost his family. So he's not given this pristine condition and he's forced to survive with that guilt of being free, but also being confined. Because if he does do anything, then he would go to jail. And so to me, I think that's that's a pretty decent ending. Um, yeah, I think the shield is interesting because like you kind of cheer for Vic as the series goes along. And even though he's like a bad guy and he deserves to rot in prison, it's not Vic. So I love the fact that he picks up the gun and breaks out of there and goes and charges into the streets one more time. I think that it's kind of like a fist pump moment at that moment. And I think sitting and riding at the desk is probably just as bad as jail. So from that angle, I think it was, it was well done. I think it was, I mean, and the worst part is that his family, I mean, mm -hmm. they put him in Whitsack in Rockford, Illinois. Who wants to live there? <laughs> <laughs> Not I, said the fly. But, um, yeah, because it, it was Rockford. Wasn't that the assumption, if I, I think, remember correctly? I, if I remember right, yeah, it's been a long time today. I have yeah. the whole season. I guess I can go watch them all again. We've got plenty of time. Really? Yeah, I've got the whole series on disc, yeah. If you ever want to watch wow. it, let me know. You can borrow it. No, I, I, I was talking about the Rockford thing. I think so. I think that was Yeah, Rockford. there's like a museum that it like... Because uh, the, the show, show creator, Sean Ryan, from Rockford, Illinois. Oh, see, I didn't know all this. Mm -hmm. This is so much more interesting now. Yeah, so I mean, I, I think the finale was great. I think it was exactly what should have happened. You know, he, you know, he, he is a bad guy. He's a dirty guy. So he's going to do whatever he can to look out for himself. He looked out for himself. He cut a deal, but at the same time, he's going to go back out there and do it again. <laughs> yeah. All right. I, I'm kind of, well, I'll take your vote and then I'll tell you where I stand. So Troy, are you up? Thumbs up or thumbs down for thumbs the ending? Up. Thumbs up. Amanda? I am thumbs up. Okay. I am thumbs up as well. I really, I love this show and I love the character. Walton Goggins is on this bad boy too. He's great on this show as well as he is in everything. It was, it was a nice, because you know what it did? Why I liked it is because it did the opposite of everything fans wanted in a good way. Like it thought of the one thing really people hadn't considered because everybody that was talking about it, well, I guess water coolers, because it wasn't much online at the time, <laughs> or maybe they were in like a Rotten Tomatoes forum or something. It was very much about... He's going to definitely die or he's definitely going to jail. It's going to be one of those two. Or he might get some deal where he goes into hiding. Those are the only three options. Nobody really considered that they were going to bench him, basically. And that's what happened. And I thought that was just a fantastic way to end that character, even if it, because it went against expectations and nobody called it. I don't know anyone that called that ending. And that's that's a great ending. Sometimes the ending that we want is not the ending that we need. People who did not like it. Okay, philosophy class. Now let's go to Troy with his next pick. Speaking of philosophy class, Battlestar Galactica. 
is actually a three-part episode finale entitled Daybreak. Mm. And for the most part, parts one and two are great. Humans and Cylons are fighting in space. It's epic. The five skin jobs that are more human than Cylons are negotiating for the Cylon race to get resurrection technology. And it all goes off the rails in part three. Uh, there's a lot of coincidence where humans and skin jobs magically defeat the Chrome Domes because a nuke just happens to be armed to knock the Cylons into a singularity where they just happen to be near. And the Galactica just happens to jump away to our Earth that they've been searching for for four seasons. And this whole time, even though this Earth is in its primitive days, and they basically get there through a musical tone that a person who isn't even real happens to hear over and over again. Yeah, I think that's why people dislike the finale, because there's just a lot of coincidence in part three. There's also a stinger at the end of the finale after they land on Earth and they decide to get rid of the technology. And they say, you know what, let's just do it differently. No technology. Let's blend in with the people that already live here. They don't even know that one of these people, um, Helena, I believe her name was, or Helena, uh, she's actually a child who is a human Cylon hybrid. And so she blends in with the normal human population and they all kind of go to the four corners of the earth to repopulate humanity. And it's in that conversation that you realize that one of these characters isn't even real for an entire season. And then it kind of fast forwards to like 10,000 years later and they have this conversation between two, I guess what you would call angels. And they're having this debate of whether or not God uh, really intervened in this whole thing. And it's in that moment that they go, well, it's going to happen again. Cycle repeats itself no matter what you end up doing. So the pros for this ending, I think are that it really makes you think you spent four years trying to decide are humans better than robots? Are Cylons better than humans? What do they believe in? There's a lot of talk about religion in this in this series with, you know, the fact that the humans believe in 12 different gods and the Cylons believe in the one true God. And literally at the very end of the series, you have this moment where there are literally two angels saying, you know, I think God has a hand in this. And then Gaius Baltar says, it doesn't like to be called God. So it implies that there's some greater being, a singular thing that is kind of manipulating all of this and making it happen, which is exactly what the Cylons believe, that there, there was one entity versus the 12. And so I think that's very interesting that it really ties up that religious aspect of it. The cons, everything I just said, really is, is the thing. There's just so much coincidence in the third, the third act and the fact that Starbuck disappears and people are just really angry that it's the, oh, it's just the, the cycle repeats itself over and over and over again. You know, it's, it's a trope that's been done many times in novels and history. And so with that regard, there's a lot of people that gave their lives to Battlestar and never want to go back again, which is sad because Caprica and Blood and Chrome are really good. Uh, can I just ask a clarifying question? Because I think my brain just went a little wonky at first and I think I'm clarified now, but yeah. I just want to make sure. Troy has a problem with when succinct, in case you were wondering. <laughs> When you said, I for some reason, I thought you were saying this was like a three-part episode. You were just talking, you broke out the acts of the one singular last episode, correct? Uh, it, yeah, that really part, parts one and parts two are space battle. And then, but they're one episode, right? Yeah. Part one, I think, and it aired originally, part one aired by itself, and then part two and three aired on the same night as a two-hour oh. finale. Oh, boy. It was kind of like right. the Lost season one, where it was like three endings to the season one finale of Lost. It's kind of done like that. Well, I'm going to take that and say no. I think I don't I don't like shows that try to be really really smart and philosophical and try to have these deep conversations but rely on coincidences and I definitely don't like shows that rely on multi-episode endings where it should have been able to either be wrapped up throughout the season, extended the season if you need to, but the finale should be an episode of a finale to me. Uh, I will. Mm, I like the ending. I do. It's, it's enjoyable. It's interesting. It does some different things. I didn't like necessarily what they did with Starbuck, but it was fine. I didn't think it was bad, but I will say like when you're, when you're talking four years and I love Battlestar Galactica, I have a, you know, I'm, blu-ray <laughs> and i've watched it probably three or four times i do think in terms of a series finale it's a little weak 
It's a little weak. I don't think it's bad. I'm not in the camp that it's bad at all. But I do think in terms of, I, it, for a show like that, kind of in concurrent with what Amanda said, it's a very, very intelligent show. It was really speaking about um, humanity and survival and what's most important about those things and a lot of other things. It had really good questions that posed every season. And then I, I do think it kind of lost its way a little bit toward the end. It, so, yeah, I would say as a series finale, it, it thumbs down. All right. Yeah, I would have to agree on uh, I really love the last scene of like that happened before it happened again. I did like I love that. The tie yeah. back in. There's a lot of about the season finale series finale that I absolutely adore. Right. And then there's just some things where you're just like, I just spent all this time and this is how it's going to end. And you just are really angry about a lot of it as it's taking place. I remember when they revealed the the fifth who the fifth Cylon was, and I was just like, "Of course it is." Was mm-hmm. the first thing that came out. I was like, "Of course it is." So it's like those kind of things kind of take away from the finale in in, in a lot of ways. Um, but man, the questions and stuff that it posed. I mean, it's hard not to like it. It's a great water cooler show. It really was, it was a great water cooler show where you just sat around with your people at work and you just talked about it, and you could go forever about that show. But if you're judging it on the finale itself. I would have to say thumbs down also, even though I really love it. Absolutely. All right, Amanda, what's next? How I Met Your Mother. Oh, boy. Okay, kids, it's time for me to tell you a story through a series of flashbacks about the journey that I and my four best friends took leading up to me meeting your mother. In this final episode, it turns out that the mother died of an illness six years ago and was hardly ever mentioned in the story that he told to the kids. Ted's kids start laughing about how this was all a long ploy to get them to be cool with him asking out Aunt Robin because he totally has the hots for her and they all leap into air with encouragement. It turns out that the mother died of an illness six years ago and was hardly ever even mentioned in the story he told to the kids. Ted's kids start laughing about how this was all a long ploy to get them to be cool with him asking out Aunt Robin because he totally has the hots for her and they all leap into the air with encouragement. Ted takes their advice and shows up with the blue French horn outside her window, which is a reference to a thing he did on he and, on his and Robin's first date. Now, the case for the ending is that everyone in the show always wanted Robin and Ted together. They were built to be together, basically, but and it was kind of implied that it was going to be that was going to be the kid's mother. That was going to be who the mother was. However, the other side of it is that this whole time this lady's been dead (laughs) and you're telling me that this was his soulmate, but now, but the whole time he was like kind of into Aunt Robin and now he wants to ask out Aunt Robin after. I mean, there's just some weird things that happen in that ending and you can feel where I'm at on it, but it just felt like it wasn't as clear as the show's direction intended to be. And it felt like they were just trying to provide a twist ending for no reason. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's for 207 episodes. I think it was one of the greatest things on television since friends was on. When you talk about these 22 minute comedies, I laughed, I cried. It was fantastic. Everything I loved. And then t- episode 208 showed up and I was just like, Really? The thing that we all said in episode one actually happened? Boring. Stupid. Dumb. Oh my God. Really? Come on. (laughs) So, I mean, judging it on the finale alone, I think it was a clever twist to say that and your mom's dead. I thought that was an interesting twist, but to go to Robin rather than go to somebody else, I think that's where it gets a thumbs down for me because it was Robin. Yeah, I would say uninspired is the word I would use. Mm-hmm. It, it just, uh, everything about it sounds, feels, is lazy. It, it's just, it, that, that's really how it reads. I mean, that's how it shows. I mean, you watch it and you're, you're wondering why did people have to wait 200 plus episodes for that ending? I mean, I just feel like that's a slap in the face and you could have probably so many fans have already come up with so many better endings <laughs> than the people that actually ran the show. And that's just never okay. In my opinion. So thumbs down. <laughs> Yeah, mine is a huge explosion into the ground, thumbs down, because not only the things you've all mentioned and what I've already mentioned, but also the kids were so excited 
for him to ask out Aunt Robin. This is what they're hearing, how they met their mother, and their first reaction is, oh, you want to ask out, Ro- out, out Aunt Robin? Let, let's grab the phone. Let's do this. Why don't you invite her now to go on a date? And they're more excited than he is. And I'm like, what kids are going to respond like that? Like, they are <laughs> jumping for literal joy at the fact that, oh, dad's going to sleep with our aunt. Cool. <laughs> Mom would be so happy. Well, I mean, I saw the aunt. She, yeah, I get it. Yeah, and just like the kids even mentioned, because that was part of the ending, is them responding to him. They're just having a conversation. And they said, she, w- Mom was hardly even in the story. It was all about Aunt Robin. Yeah, why the frick, I will not swear, did you tell us a story that hardly inc- included the mother? That was the whole point. I felt like the kids. That was the thing. Like, it's a 22-minute 22, 22 minute TV comedy episode, so... I sat here, Dad, for 104 hours because you wanted to ask Aunt Robin out. I could have told you that in the first 20 minutes. Can I go play video yeah. games now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, it's funny. All right, thumbs down for How I Met Your Mother. Now I think we have one of the most controversial endings of all time, The Sopranos. Tony Soprano is my boss, wrestling with family life and the requirement of his quote-unquote job, which are explored in his relationship with his therapist. There's even a prequel movie coming called The Many Saints of Newark, I believe. It's coming out later this year. If if it's coming out later this year, I don't know, but it's coming out soon. <laughs> but in the extremely controversial series finale, Tony Soprano arrives to have dinner with his family while Journey plays on the jukebox and a ton of suspicious people arrive and sit down. A shady dude goes into the bathroom. Tony's daughter finally parks that car, bounces across the street to the diner. We hear a door open. We hear a bell ding. And Tony looks up, cut to black. And when I say cut to black, freaking cut to black. <laughs> There's nothing. They don't even do credits. I think it was for 10 seconds before you see a credit. So you didn't even know, what, is that what I think it is? Or did my cable go out? And that's what a lot of people felt like at the time. So here's the case for this ending, okay? Many people feel, and this is very evenly split, that this ending is brilliant. It lets everyone who loves this show decide for themselves exactly how the series ends. Tony finished dinner, went home, or he was whacked right after he saw his daughter. It's your call, and it's your choice. So it's a choose-your-own-adventure ending. The case against this ending, you get nothing. (laughs) Nothing. Fans spent six years watching and waiting to see what happened to Tony Soprano, and they gave absolutely zero closure for the main man himself. It was infuriating for many and an insult to fans and, and their own minds. That's the case for both. And I, and I do think it's fair to say both cases are relevant. A lot of people still talk about this ending, which is maybe a good thing, maybe not. I don't know. Where do you guys stand? Amanda, where do you stand on The Sopranos? Well, Troy seems real passionate about it. I can let him really dive into this and get all of his words and feelings <laughs> out because it'll be eight days from now when I can speak. Okay, please. Oh, she's giving you the floor. Okay. I should turn it over well, to you. This is why The Sopranos ending is the most amazing thing on television. Mm. And it's because, I shouldn't say it that way. It's a very broad statement. We actually talk about this on, on the Westworld podcast quite a bit about the, the creators being more clever than the audience and not playing fair with the audience. Because I think only people that are good studies of film or television will really appreciate this ending because you have to know exactly what show you were watching the entire time to figure out what really happened at the end. So a casual viewer is really going to be frustrated with the ending because they probably aren't going to put the pieces together, but the pieces were there from episode one in the members only jacket. And the first episode is called members only. And that first episode, I can't remember the character's name. Was it Elias Aaron? Is it Eli? I, I think so. It's been so long since I saw it. I, I know. Well, you're such a avid film and television uh, fanatic here. But I don't have everything memorized. Holy crap. I don't, it was, no, it was I was so talking to ago. I was oh. talking to Troy because he said you have to be you have to be so well versed in the study of film and television <laughs> to understand the brilliance of this ending. Otherwise, like, you are just not on par with the creators. But, but hold also, up while I stand over you, Lord over you, and look down upon <laughs> thee with furious anger. But but it's true because um because this whole members only was the name of the first episode. 
The guy wears the members only jacket. He gets picked on by Tony constantly throughout the entire series. He is the sole reason why he doesn't go to Florida when he wants to go to Florida. The guy hangs himself because he's so pissed off that Tony won't, won't let him go to Florida. And then the guy that walks into the bathroom, if you notice the mm-hmm. direction of the bathroom door to where Tony is sitting, he's got a perfect line of sight that the guy that walks into the bathroom could literally shoot Tony in the back of the head and Tony would never know it. That guy is wearing a members only jacket. First mm-hmm. of all, second of all, Tony's favorite movie is the Godfather. And if you remember the Godfather, that's exactly what happens. Dude walks in the bathroom because the gun is hiding in the bathroom. So what way for Tony to go out than to get whacked exactly the same way that the guy gets whacked in the Godfather with the guy coming out of the bathroom and then shooting him. Thirdly, the reason why the point of view scenario that he does, there's four people that come in the, in the, in the restaurant. Every time Tony looks up, he sees all four people. When his daughter comes in the restaurant, we don't actually get the shot of Tony seeing his daughter. And because of that, I think he actually gets shot before he actually sees his daughter. So it's almost even a more tragic death. And the fact that it cuts to black is different than when he wakes up from a coma in season six, I believe it was. When he wakes up from the coma, it's an all white screen. So the white screen, he opens up his eyes and then he's back to life. Where here, he, it goes cut to black. Like black is death, white is life. So all of that combined, the ending is just perfect. Tony gets whacked by the dude in the members only jacket, Godfather style, never sees his daughter come through the door. Here's okay, the, here's, here's, here's my here's, response here's to this, bell. Troy. Here's the bell, but never actually sees the daughter. Here's my response to that. If that ending is so clear cut, then there is zero reason to allow people to continue to debate the implications of the ending. And you should have just shown them getting whacked in the bathroom because that would have been a holy shit moment. Instead, you decided to leave viewers to debate this and create people like Troy who say that you have to be super intelligent and a study of television and film to understand the ending when this show was not made for people that understand and study film and television. It's made for people who give a shit about Tony Soprano and had no idea after all this investment What happened to him? Because one of your key words, I would like to reiterate, was I think. I think does not mean it happened. It means that is your perception and your belief. So on the other hand, now we have this untold ending and conclusion, which does not leave a debate as to moral implications, philosophical implications, any of those really deep, deep questions that linger with people's minds like we talked about with Battlestar Galactica. However, it's just about the main character's life. Now, it's different if we have some sort of conclusion, whether he's dead or alive or what he plans to do. Some of that can kind of be left open. But this ending was so abrasive and brash. And to me, that's just a huge slap in the face. I don't care how smart and studied you are. Which is exactly what would happen. If you died, if you died, because if you remember the episode starts, I think it starts out with Tony walks into the restaurant himself and he actually is visually imagining himself sitting in the booth having dinner. So it's established from the start that this is Tony's perspective from Tony's point of view the entire time. So if Tony dies, cut to black is exactly what happens when you die. Boom. There's nothing. That's not necessarily true. It's not necessarily true. And, and David Chase, creator, uh, said that it's not true. So <laughs> I, would, I would say he definitely wrote it. So it was very much an open ending. He wanted people to make up their own minds. He didn't. He's never even, I don't, I think to this day, still hasn't said exactly what would have happened. So uh, well, that's I how go, I saw it. I, then just say that you were coming across a little preachy there, brother, where you're like, hey, hey, you ain't smart enough to understand the ending to Sopranos. This is what happened. (laughs) What's up with the accent? That was not great. I felt a little Tiger King coming on. I don't know what's going on. It just (laughs) happened. (laughs) So here's here's my take on it. I'm I'm of I'm of two minds. So we've got we're split vote. So I guess I decide. Yay! Uh, From a filmmaking, and I'm a very studied film. I wouldn't say scholar, but a film student student of film. So I I don't necessarily disagree with what Troy's saying. Maybe definitely with the phrasing. (laughs) <laughs> but but I do feel 
that yes, if this was a movie, I would love the ending. I would champion the ending because hey, that's bold. That's that's brave. Right. Because it is six years worth of people's time and investment and so many other factors, I don't I don't like it. I, I don't I mean I I like it. I personally like it. Okay, so if I'm going off just my own opinion, I like it. I do think it's interesting, and I'm gonna I have pretty much the exact same scenario as as Troy as to what happened. The hitman walked in the bathroom, came out, bell rang. Only in my mind, he saw the daughter. Like, that's the last thing he saw before he died. In my mind, that's that's what that bell signified. That's the last thing he sees before he dies, which is what he would want to see before he died. So that's kind of a sweet ending almost for somebody like him. But I do, I thought about this so much. I used to have um, debates about this with uh, Brian Williams, who used to be a Hollywood Outsider host. I very much feel, I don't think you have to have everything... It was neatly wrapped up or anything else. I'm a big fan of mm -hmm. leaving things ambiguous, making you question things. I love that. This, I agree with Amanda. This just isn't a show that needed that. And the fans deserved some, a little bit more measure of closure. You can still debate the ending, which means it isn't a solid ending. It isn't a solidified ending. It's not definite. You just think what happened happened. I think what happened happened. Neither one of us knows. And I just don't feel like this show needed that. And it's so abrupt. <laughs> I mean, it it's is super abrupt. It's super. I haven't rewatched it right before the show because it's been so long since I saw it. I'm like, I just remember wanting to punch my TV and I can't remember why. And I'm like, oh, that's why. It is one, though, I will say, if you sit on it for a while and you go back to it and rewatch it, I think you enjoy it a little bit more. But I, I just, man, I just feel like there's probably a better way to do that. So I would probably do there's a thumbs. There's a great it's a thumb at a, like a 40% because I don't dislike it. We're not doing Amanda votes here, Aaron. Pick one up or down. Down. It's down. Yeah. I, I, there's a benefit to shows a TV trying show, to... You should have done more with the ending. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. There's a benefit with shows trying to be creative and do something as a scholarly filmmaker. <laughs> and She's going to be rubbing your nose in that the rest try, of the show. <laughs> try to create an ending that allows people to debate the conflict and what the potential resolution is. And you're right. There are various, you know, the way that they set it up, it was intended to to show that, I think. However, like I said, it's just one that didn't need it. And that's not the, the fan base that they were catering to for six seasons. They had some of them, but not their entire fan base. So if you rely on that, to me, that makes you you're not you're not going to create a happy audience your yeah. your ending isn't going to sit well enough for those people who put all that time and effort into it Damn. thumbs down all right well now we hey jerry jerry what's the next one jerry oh, talking boy. about my shirt buttons is that what you're talking about <laughs> hello <Yeah>. newman <laughs> we are talking about the divisive finale of seinfeld the finale in summary is the gang that we've traveled with this whole time is now on trial for not helping an overweight man who's getting carjacked because they make fun of the overweight man while they're standing there watching it all happen. So they get cited for not doing something, which is basically called the good Samaritan law. Now this is an interesting way that this ends because through the entire episode, and it's almost like a two, two hour, isn't it? It's like a two parter. If I remember correctly, they bring back like all the favorite characters from the entire series to be witnesses of all the bad things that they've done throughout this entire show, like the soup Nazi and a whole bunch of other people. And eventually they get, you know, convicted of the crime and go to jail. I think it was, it was an hour. I don't think it was a necessarily a two, it's hour, two yeah, parter. Sorry, two, two parter. That's yeah. what I meant. Two parter. Yeah. Um, but they go to jail because they did nothing on a show about nothing. So the pro is that it's absolutely beautiful because they go to jail for doing nothing for a show about nothing. If you get the show, you'd probably love the ending. And it was great because when they're in the, the jail cell, they actually have this conversation, Jerry and George, about George's buttons on his shirt, which is, again, is exactly the conversation they had when the show started way back in the beginning of the day. So it literally has come full circle. I think the cons against it are what happens after they're in jail where Seinfeld gets up on stage in prison and does a stand-up routine. And the only one that's laughing is Kramer. Nobody else is laughing at the joke. And then Jerry basically exits the stage and it's almost like giving a middle finger to the audience, the way he kind of exits. And it's, and you just feel like, man, really? I gave you like all my time 
And because I gave you that time, this is how you're going to treat me as you walk off the stage for the last minute. It's like, uh huh, I got you, sucker, is how you feel when you watch him walk off the stage in prison. So, yeah, pros, it, it really wraps up everything with a bow because you bring all these favorite characters back. It's a real great walk down memory lane. It's all kinds of good feelings and it's funny. But yeah, once they hit the jail cell, it's like all con from there for me. We got to work with Troy on his delivering. So he's taking himself out of the pros and cons. You, you'd make a very bad attorney. You're like, I, I'm not saying he's guilty, but that mofo did it. He did it. I'm not saying he did it though. I'm just saying he did it. Every year I change my opinion on Seinfeld. (laughs) Every year. So I love, funny. Maybe I like the ending. No, no, I don't like the ending. I'm changing my mind even as we talk about it. Let's take Amanda first because I know she doesn't like Seinfeld. I hate this show. I hate it. <laughs> but I will say with an ending like this, yes, it's fun that they're trying to create something that's entertaining and engaging and it's trying to be funny. But I also don't think that they would actually get arrested for this because they would have to not be put in peril for this to apply. And if someone is actively carjacking, then they could be in peril. So that would alleviate them. However, um, the ending that you or the last like minute or so that Troy was talking about where someone just walks off the stage where he just walks off. I think that's funny. I like that. I don't think it's an F you, but this ending is still stupid to, to me and that's not because i don't like the show i have tried to be very unbiased while listening to troy's description of each side although he didn't do the best job of being unbiased himself <laughs> pretty biased <laughs> pretty biased <laughs> and so i'm still gonna give it a thumbs down mostly because i feel like it only takes 20 seconds to review your google search and find out that they wouldn't have been arrested for that but well okay. i don't i don't think they really Google searches Hair. were a big thing at that time. I love this ending. I love it. I know people hate it. I don't care. I love this ending. It, it's just, it's the show. The show is about a-holes. They were a-holes the entire run of the show. They were selfish. Yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> Maybe. They're selfish. They're self-involved. Everything is about them. G- like all of, all four of them. And they love to make fun of other people for being this way, but they are the worst people. They are just awful people. And that's Amen. why, that's why I thought they were funny. That's why I laugh with them. I'm like, these are my kind of people. Like, they that's just, me. They say this stuff. What said. Yeah, well, they don't. They don't feel, like I don't feel like that, but I say stuff like that sometimes. So it just it made me laugh like a lot. It made me laugh. A it lot. validates you. <laughs> yeah, in some in some way. And there's such comedic gold in that entire series. And and I, I I just like every actor. Each of the four leads, I think, is a really good fit for their respective character. And it's a perfect end for them because these a-holes deserve to be in jail because of all the awful things they do to everybody else. I was fine with the entire ending. I give it a thumbs up. Troy, we don't even need you to give your well, I don't like the or down. We knew from your... Well, no, like he said he keeps walk- debating it. So, yeah, know. I don't like the way he walks off the stage at the end. I think they should have just left it with the jail cell. If you leave it with the jail cell and the button conversation, it's the perfect ending to the show. The jail cell stand-up routine was just because before every episode started, Jerry did a stand-up routine in the opening credits. And I think that's what they were trying to do. So if you cut out the jail cell portion, it's like one of the best endings in TV, I think. Well, just do what I do. No, hey, hey, do what I do with Lord of the Rings, man. As soon as everybody bows. Ending number one happens. As soon as everybody bows, movie's over. I haven't watched past that since since the theater. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. No, I still like the ending. I think it ends up right where it should be. So I'm a thumbs up. All right. Seinfeld moves on. You know what? Now we're in the final three, and these are the three most polarizing, most controversial finale, series finales of all time. And I got a feeling one of them I'm going to feel a lot different than you guys on. But let's start with Amanda. (laughs) So Dexter, in this finale, Dexter's sister, oh, should I recap? He is a guy who works for the police and also murders people. His sister, Deb, initially survived a shooting from the prior episode, but her injuries were way too severe, and the doctors told Dexter that she was brain dead. So naturally, Dexter did what Dexter does, and he pulled the plug himself. He then decides to confront her killer by pretending that he still works for the police and is conducting a GSR test, and kills the man with a ballpoint pen, stabs the dude, and then stabs himself so he can claim self-defense. Because he and Deb both were on the force and the two officers were close to them, they decide to let Dexter go. Because, of course. 
Dexter then took Deb's body to his boat at the hospital's pier and decides he wants to bury her in a way into the ocean like he did with the other bodies that he dismembered and threw her in while everyone else was distracted by the impending hurricane. He then drove the slice of life, his boat, into the storm, apparently killing himself. Everyone thinks Dexter is dead, including Hannah, who's now saddled with raising Dexter's son, Harrison, in Argentina. Fade to black. Except the lights come back on. (laughs) And we see Dexter, Morgan, all bearded up in a flannel, living alone, oceanside as some construction worker. And the last image of Dexter is him sitting at his table tearing up. The case for this ending is that Dexter is a man who has always struggled with being normal and being someone who can connect with others, and that's his Achilles heel. In this ending, he is forced to survive with the grief of losing everything and everyone he has ever loved, truly loved, and is forced to live his life in solitude. The case against the ending, let's start with the hurricane. He drove into a hurricane and survived it. He gave up and abandoned his child and was just apparently kind of cool with it. He threw away his sister's body in a with a sheet covering her into the ocean like he did all of the horrible, horrible victims of his massacres. And apparently that's a way to mourn her. Nobody seems to care that he was on camera stabbing this dude very particularly to kill him in the neck with a ballpoint pen and had one tiny little hole mark in his shoulder. Nobody does anything. They just say, all right, Dexter, we know you have a lot going on, so you you can go ahead and go be free. And then the very end is just not great overall. So, Aaron, what are your thoughts on Dexter's finale? Uh, go with Troy first. I- I'm passionate about this one. Oh, okay. We love passion, Troy. <laughs> Um, it was a weird episode, if I remember correctly. It didn't really seem to fit the rest of the series, but at the same time, when you go to look at the characters, what the characters stood for and were molded into, I kind of think I like it. I really do. It was a really interesting bond between the, the, the siblings and to do it the way they did it, but yet he could still go on being who he was. I mean, yeah, that leaving the sun behind was a little bit weird, but no, I mean, I... I, I think I like this ending. I really do. I think it was really one of the better ways to close out the show, even if the final episode itself was just really strange in the crux of how the rest of the show aired. Well, that was surprising. Okay, Aaron. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I like this ending. What? I swear to God, I didn't see this until probably two or three years after everybody else had seen it. Because for whatever reason, I fell off of Dexter in around, I think, when Rita died. So I finally came mm-hmm. back to it and finished it out. I had heard people hated this ending. Like, So keep in mind, the bar was set on the floor. It wasn't even low. It was on the floor because I knew people hated this ending so much. And so I finally got to the final episode and I almost like I didn't watch it for a couple months. True story. I, I like I didn't want to watch it for a couple months just because I'm like. Man, everybody says they hate it. I kind of like the season so far. I mean, it's not great, but it's not bad. I don't I don't really want to see it and then have this whole show ruined for me. I've mm-hmm. I've had that happen too many times. But I'm, I finally I went through with it. And he gives his kid away. He does finally he does a selfless act. I like that. He gave it to her, maybe that's borderline, I don't know, but he gave it to someone that he he felt he could trust. And she probably will take care of little 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 junior, junior serial killer. De- uh, Deborah dying was was really heartbreaking. I don't think he was in his right mind. Hurricane, it's Florida. I just thought that was just a, a weird thing to throw, basically to throw an obstacle at him as he's trying to do things the way he wants to do them. I didn't have a problem with it. Like I, I get, I get some you of don't, people's concerns. It didn't bother but... you that he survived a hurricane. His boat went into it directly into the hurricane. And then he survived. No problem. Oh, yeah, it bothers me. But not enough to where I'm like, I don't like that finale. It's Dex. The dude has gotten away with murder for eight years. I, it, him riding into a hurricane is the least of the unbelievability of it all to me. To me. So it's I don't get why people are like, that is just so ridiculous. Like, I would argue he has not gotten away with it. He's just resolved it anytime it came up. Put it this way. He was still free at the last episode. So he's. He's technically gotten away with it. 
And Isn't then, that kind of dumb, though? Isn't that what? He got away with stabbing a man on camera, and they were like, no, man, that's cool. It was self-defense. I mean, he worked for the police department. They're turning away. They're turning a little side eye to the brothers. Like, hey, we got you, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. We got you. <laughs> I didn't have as big of a problem with it. I thought the whole lumberjack thing was kind of funny. Like, I laughed really out loud. And not in the that's ridiculous way. More like, I think that's clever. I really do. <laughs> I really do. I think that's clever. He's stuck doing like he, everything he just hates. He can't be what he wanted to be. He was trying so hard to be the Dexter he wanted to be, and he couldn't be the Dexter he just was. And if he just would have been the person he want, he should have been the whole time. None of those people would have died. All those people that died because of Dexter died because he was trying to be someone he's not. He finally went, gave up everything, lost everything, gave up what he had left, and went, and he was forced to live in solitude. And that's why he finally had an emotional moment. I like the ending. Did you feel like that episode was different? Like it felt like it was different than the rest of the show? Uh, it, yeah. I mean, I guess, yeah. I would agree with that. It does feel a little, a little different. But, man, I even watched it like two or three times. I think I watched it three times over the course of two weeks because I had heard so much hate for this episode. And I'm like, I just don't get what you guys hate about it. Like, I just don't think it's that bad. I just don't. Maybe it's because I had a couple of years away from it, removed from it. Maybe that mattered, but I like the ending. So my thumb maybe is up. Was not a hurricane going on while you were watching it. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Like, seriously, I didn't even think while I watched it, I'm going, I don't know why people think this is so ridiculous. He's done so many more ridiculous things and turned out. Okay. So, I hate this ending <laughs> more than any ending of a TV show that has ever happened, ever. I gather it that. is so ludicrous to me that he got to walk away completely scot free and got to continue being the man that he always has been. That he put this child on another woman to force to raise. While she presumes he's dead, that he just somehow managed to wheel his dead sister out of the hospital with nobody else questioning him, going through the ER to get to his boat because that's where he put his boat and left it. Nobody questions him taking out the body in his weird, stupid shirt. And then (laughs) he (laughs) survived. And then he survives the hurricane. It just to me is. It is so ridiculous and stupid and just a really cruel ending for fans everywhere, in my opinion. I know you both disagree, but man, I freaking hate it. Well, I I I feel it It ruined the show for me. I think I'm more passionate about the show than Troy. I don't know how much you watched it, Troy. I I really I love Dexter. I even read the books because I, I love Dexter. I get like. I didn't love the ending. I just didn't hate the ending. And I think that's probably the difference. Like you saw yeah. it when it first came out. I, I really feel like maybe that makes a difference. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Because I just had taken myself so far out of it. I didn't have a really worked up passion about how it was going to end oh, or, or what was going to happen. Connection. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's not like I, I didn't still love the show. It's just I didn't have that immediate, what's going to happen? I need to know. Where's it going to go? It was I was so far removed from it that I could just watch it and for what it was. And I really like the lumberjack thing because at the end, I'm, I'm starting to think of all the how all these lumberjack <laughs> mischievous adventures <laughs> Dexter's going to have. Is he going to kill the local lumberjack murderer? Who's what's he going to do? I'm fascinated. And I just I just thought that was kind of funny. I'm sorry, is Amanda. He gonna, also, is he going to do it with a hatchet? Is he going to do it with a, with a tree saw? <laughs> right. I Maybe also just really hated strap. that they put it in. They did the fade to black. Ah, cop out. He's actually alive thing. Like, that drove me insane. How cliche and lazy this ending was. Ugh. Ugh. Anyway, let's move on to another controversial But he's the bad bad guy that you always love to love, and he got away with it, which I think is the perfect thing for Dexter. But he shouldn't have gotten away with it. (laughs) He shouldn't have. He should, the very least, his, his emotional capacity, the way that he loved, how much he loved Deb, and how much he loved their relationship and losing her that should have been in that catalyst turned him into 
being sloppy where he killed a man on camera. That should have been the moment that got him captured because his emotions took complete control of him and he finally lost it. He finally lost the ability to control himself and control his murders and he did it on camera and he wouldn't have been able to get away with it. Well, I think if that's he would, what I think should have been the ending. I think if he would have lived, he would have been charged for that. If he would have perceived to have been alive, he would have been charged they for They just it. let him walk out. They said, Dexter, it was self-defense. Go on, my man. And they literally let him walk out. They go, they go said that. They said, it's self-defense. I understand. I just, I just it wasn't as... That show had so many ridiculous plot turnings, so it didn't so bother me as much. So dumb. I respect so how passionate you feel. I, a lot of people feel the same way you do, so I know oh, man. Troy and I are probably going to get a lot of flack for not being on the negative side of that one. <laughs> We got two left, guys. Here's number two. Game of Thrones. Oh, boy. It followed characters, families, sigils, dragons, kings, queens, and paupers as they desperately pined for power and a little peace here and there. In the final straw, Daenerys Targaryen burns down King's Landing in a rage, and Jon Snow murders her ass for it, believing she will essentially enslave the world to her worldview. She will become a dictator, and that's not what he wanted to help. He never wanted it. As the show wraps up, our remaining four Starks begin anew. Bran is chosen to rule as king. Arya sails west of Westeros. Sansa becomes the queen of the north. And Jon Snow heads to the black. And then he just keeps on walking to the north for the free folk. The case for this ending. It wraps up every major plot line and cements the fact that the show was always truly about the Stark family. Every other character was just about filling, filling in the gaps. Daenerys was destined to snap. It's in her blood, and many times throughout the series, she punished those who didn't jump on her bandwagon. The folks at King's Landing could have left, or joined her, or rebelled against Cersei. They chose not to, so how would they ever follow her? The remaining characters had fitting farewells, though the final stretch was a bit too quick. All the details work. That's the case for the ending. The case against this ending. For six seasons, this was a carefully paced and plotted series that decided... They needed to wrap up in light speed, zipping from place to place in record time, ignoring long distances and lots of gap filling that needed to be done. Daenerys' fall was rushed and poorly conceived. Jon Snow would have been killed instantly by Grey Worm. And the final, and by the way, they never would have let Tyrion go on for 47 minutes as he pined and opined for Bronn to be king. And also, he doesn't have the best story. No, he did not. The final few episodes which led to the conclusion were simply rushed and ignored the brilliant storytelling that preceded it. It was a mess. That was the case against this ending. How sayeth y'all? Man, I don't know who should go first. I'm nervous. <laughs> go ahead. Dun, 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 dun. I absolutely loved it. Now, I did not watch it since it began. I binged watch seasons one and season six in 20 days and then got ready for season seven. So I watched seven and eight live. I agree with the pace of seven and eight being a little bit weird. You know, Raven time apparently travels through wormholes and stuff in order to get from one end of Westeros to the other, but that's not the finale. The finale is about the Starks and the Starks are the ones who win in the end and they get exactly what every single one of them want. That is what the show was about from episode one. The only thing in the finale that I would say is bad. And this is my opinion is that Jamie Lannister should have stabbed Cersei with a sword and then died in the rubble on his own, trying to escape and get to the hero's death. That's the one thing that I wanted to have happen is that Jamie could be freed from his sister's grasp. So that, that one piece is the only thing that I really have a qualm about the family. Otherwise everything else makes total sense. And I absolutely loved it. The melting of the iron throne from Drogon freaking amazing because it's the throne that got her killed, not, snow and the fact that drogon doesn't kill him because of that tells you everything that you need to know because dragons are the smart ones <laughs> and i was even fine with bran getting it and i actually loved Tyrion's diatribe at the end and explaining why bran's the reasonable choice i thought it's the first time that he actually made 100 percent sense in the whole thing so i did not hate it at all i'm not in the camp of people who didn't hate it i did feel a little underwhelmed by the finale I wasn't in love with it like Troy is. And I felt like Danny's storyline was a little predictable. I didn't feel 
as moved by that as I thought I would. They did rush the season, but this episode was still well wrapped up. They did conclude the storylines that we needed them to conclude. I did not hate it. I enjoyed, for the most part, where people ended up, and they had some really great moments in that episode. They just needed more, but I was not bothered by Danny ravaging through. I understand that. To me, it makes sense. And I think it was a great way to show her character and show her depth and show her story arc. She had an actual arc. She came from one place and ended up on the other side, but it made sense. So I have re- I watched every, I mean, before each season started, after season one, I rewatched the all the seasons leading up to it. I did that for every single season. So before season eight, I did the same thing, watched all the seven seasons before it started. And then this past winter, I rewatched season eight in full to see how I felt, you know, actually we watched seven and eight. We watched both in full just to kind of see how the last two. And I will say, yeah, it was a little too short. 13 episodes. I still think three more episodes, fl- flesh it out a little bit. And does it work better? Sure. I agree with that. I do think it was faster pace. And the same token, every character to me was already introduced. It was time to start getting getting to the end of it. Nothing with Daenerys bothered me. It was all built into the storyline. Rewatching it, it's all there. The only thing I would say is, and I'm adamant about this, though I understand why she burned down King's Landing, I do wish just at one point they would have added anyone in King's Landing yelling at her when she was up on top of that dragon thinking, just yelling at her or saying, we'll never follow you or anything like that, just to give her, just to give the audience some indication as to why, what, why she snapped. I got it. It didn't bother me. I totally was on board and it was a holy shit kind of moment of television, but that wasn't the finale. The finale was the next episode. The only problem I had was that Jon Snow wasn't murdered on the spot. That didn't make any sense to me. (laughs) Grey Worm should have killed him right there. As soon as he found Daenerys' body, I understand why Jon Snow killed her. And I thought that was, that was heartbreaking. I, I thought Kit Harrington did a fantastic mm-hmm. job with that moment. I love that moment. Tyrion, his whole sol- soliloquy on Bran was interesting. I don't necessarily agree with every aspect of it, but it worked for me. I just didn't understand why they gave him so much floor time because he was a prisoner at that point. It was just kind of weird. But I love the, the final ending, especially the last 15 minutes, like where every, Stark gets their due and they're going their own way and they're basically each going a different direction and but you know they're still connected and it's just man I I like the ending a lot and I've rewatched it a couple times and I I have no major problems other than maybe you could have had at least one or two episodes that last season to flesh it out a little bit yeah, I had more problem with I'm not not I, I had no problem with the Night King death. That was amazing. I freaking love that episode. But the, <laughs> but the whole like the fact that the night the, the army from the north just isn't part of the rest of this like it ends at that episode. I had more problems with that than I had with the finale. I loved like, it. Right. It should have been more inclusive in the the final battle, I would think, cuz it built up to something and that was just kind of like, "Oh, we're just going to rush through this." I don't know. I don't know. The Night King's I, death is amazing, but hmm. I was good with it because I wanted to get to the the other characters like that was. But to be fair, that was always the least interesting part to me. So I didn't care about that. I, I just wanted that storyline done because I wanted to get to the character stuff. So I guess it's it, based on what you're saying. But all three of us are thumbs up. I'm kind of surprised by that because the Internet is very split. The Internet ruined lives <laughs> because of this. <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah. Interesting. Keyboard warriors. <sighs> okay, now we've got one left. And Trey, I'm going to ask you, please try to deliver it like you don't have an opinion on it. Seriously, please do. It's kind of hard. Be fair. Give it a shot. <laughs> okay, the final one we're going to talk about is, of course, Lost. And the only reason why Aaron allowed me to be on the podcast this week. So Jack and his band of former <laughs> candidates traveled to the heart of the island for the final epic showdown against the Smoke Monster, a.k.a. the Man in Black, a.k.a now represented as former Oceanic 815 passenger John Locke. In a series of events that see Jack turn from a man of science to a man of faith, he battles the man in black, which ultimately leads to Locke's death, just as he's about to escape the island, which then, of course, keeps him on the island. However, the island is still doomed. So Jack needs to go back to the heart of the island and fix everything that Desmond broke, 
put it back together. And because of that experience, plus the stab wound that Jack had uh, from the fight from the man in black, Jack ends up appearing somewhere in the middle of the island near the bamboo forest that he was in when he originally arrived on the island the first time. He stumbles and falls to his death with his eye closing just as the show opened with Jack's eye opening right next to Vincent the dog. Now, this is intercut, of course, with the flash sideways that we got in season six. And during this episode, we see Jack and this merry band of fellow travelers actually arriving at a church in Los Angeles where they've basically gathered to meet in what ends up being a pseudo purgatory for fans of season one who called purgatory from the beginning. So the writers still kind of got their original point across with this flash sideways. And as Jack is actually falling down in the bamboo forest to die, we now see that Jack kind of sloops down into the pew next to Kate as they make their final journey from purgatory into whatever comes next in a bright flash of light as Christian Shepherd. That was a funny joke uh, in the finale from Kate, but Christian Shepherd then walks through the bright light, much like the electromagnetic light that you see on the Island, which was representative of all the good that happened. Now the cons against this finale are that there's so many things that are left unanswered. How did the Hurley bird actually come to be? Why does Hurley's voice show up on the numbers from the numbers station at one point in time during the show? Why are the Dharma stations still there? Who's in charge? What the hell happened to Walt? There's all kinds of questions about the island itself. Why does it move? How many electromagnetic pockets of energy are there? There's one in LA at the church, apparently the lamppost station. And there's this one where the island is. So how are those connected? Why are they connected? Um, There's just a lot of questions. And then the flash sideways itself really tripped people up because it was teased in the season five that, that if they blew up the hydrogen bomb, that they would have actually not crashed. And the whole flash sideways was that it was what happens if they don't crash on the Island and it plays out and how their lives still touch and interconnect. And so I think that confused a lot of people with the entire six season until they finally get to the ending. And then one of the things that happened was that ABC, this was ABC, not the writers of the show, but ABC decided to air images of the plane crash from the first episode over the final credits because the executives thought that in that moment, there just needed to be something over the credits rather than just the credits. And I think that confused a lot of people because if Jack died and they all went to heaven, then they were dead the whole time. And I think that's why people think it was a con. The pros of Lost are that the show itself was about Jack's journey. It started with Jack with his eye opening. It's Jack's experiences on the Island. It's Jack's um, people that he runs across in his life. He's lost. He doesn't understand why he is the way he is. He's uh, upset about his father dying, even though his father was a dick to him his entire life. So he has to wrestle with that whole concept of what about my dad and why now? And why is this all happening? So when you get to the finale and you see that, All of these people are there at Jack's death. These are the people that traveled with them. Everything that happened on the island happened. Everybody that died, died. Some died before Jack. Some died after Jack. Some died on the island. Some died off of the island. But when you get to that flash sideways scene and he has that heart to heart with his dad about what really is going on, I mean, my heart just breaks. I lost my father. And and I think that that moment just connects with people when you have that heart to heart with the parent And then to see all the people in his life that are sitting around him, that are there with him as he tries to move forward and move on, uh, definitely says that this is a show about people, not about the island. And therefore, I think that's why the pros say Lost is a good ending. Well, this is quite an ending that I think is probably one of the more controversial endings that we've had over a long period of time. It's still one that everyone (laughs) debates for whatever reason, because everybody's very passionate about it, however many years later. But to me, I don't like the idea of so many pieces that can cause confusion and I don't, I know what you're talking about, Troy, where the the credits have the pictures above and what that does. That should be thought about too. You should consider what all is happening throughout the entirety of the show and what that means. And if they 
didn't all die at the same time, then how does that account for the others who weren't on board 815? Because it doesn't make sense if they... uh, There's just a lot of pieces that move with it. I don't like the way that it concluded, and I don't like that it seems to me that it was an ending that was intended to divide the audience. Well... Uh, let's see. Troy and I have, uh, debated. Here we go. That's a nice way to say it. Debated this, uh, many times over the years. Would you, would you agree with that word? Debated? Debated is uh, a fair word. Yeah, I would say, yeah. Se- this is a seven year conversation that always happens. <laughs> yeah. Seven year conversation yeah. that always happens. Next time I get in an argument, I'm going to say, I'm just having a conversation. Basically with just you. take everything I'm going to say and he's going to say the opposite. So here's what I, I will tell you this. Yeah, Jack was a lead character. It wasn't Jack's show. Every episode followed the arc of one other character that he ran across in the island, sure, but it wasn't just about Jack. It was about all the characters. It was very much... The characters had a beautiful series ending. I'll tell you that right now. I think it had a fantastic ending for the characters. And yes, they weren't in purgatory. The whole section, the whole sideways, flash sideways, was really about where they're going to meet up later in the afterlife. And they all come back together. Their journey was together. Although Saeed mm-hmm. and Shannon shouldn't have been together. That's just weird and wrong. And I uh, forget that. <laughs> Everybody else, it worked great. But the idea that that show is just about the characters is mind boggling to me. I can't fathom anyone who can say that with a straight face. Every single episode, every single episode they addressed some other mystery on that island that was unexplained and, and we need to get to the bottom of it. And it's very important and it's very mysterious and it's very supernatural or science or whatever it's based in, or even very religious near the end of it. When we went to the black and white stones and we've got these weird dudes hanging out on the island that are ones, but is he a God? Is he a devil? What is he? We don't know. <laughs> There's <laughs> so much of this show was also about the island mystery and to discount that and to discount all the fans just pisses me off. Because the very there there is a small of which Troy is is a member. I think he I think he started the branch for these particular Lost Club members. Where where if you don't get on board with the whole, it was all about the characters. <laughs> you're too dumb to appreciate the show. And I say, like, I'm doing uh, gun fingers here, dual middle fingers middle to those gun people. Fingers. <laughs> yeah, because no, that wasn't the show. The show was always about the characters and the mysteries. They were both very important and very pivotal to the enjoyment of the show. And Lost was one of my favorite shows of all time until the finale, where they coughed up a big fur ball on the whole island aspect of the show and told the fans to go screw themselves because we're not smart enough to write an ending for that. We really just wanted to present all these questions and give you zero answers. Sure, we can answer a couple things. We did that here and there. But overall, we're not really going to answer all these thousands of questions we decided to pose over the course of six seasons it was insulting it was it was rude (laughs) very rude and they never had a book they never had a game plan for that ending that's the funny part is i think some fans think that they had this all mapped out i 100 percent have confirmed with people that knew people on the show that did not happen they did not have a bible it wasn't all mapped out they went as they went as they went And they just didn't have the ending mapped out. So every time they were asking these questions, they were just going to figure it out as they went. Great. Then figure it out. Give me some answers. Like that's part of the fun of a show like this. When you, it's like reading a mystery and then they never tell you who done it. Uh, Well, then why was was I reading the mystery the whole time? Like you keep giving (laughs) me clues and then you're not going to tell me who did it. Piss off. (laughs) And then you're going to tell me it was all about Shirley? Yeah. So wait, I need to back up for a second and ask. So you're telling me that Troy started a fan base. (laughs) Oh, no, no. That is for... No, no, no. Hold on. (laughs) That is for people who believe that you should be brilliant and studied enough to understand the ending? I think so. I just want to clarify. I think so. But see, that's every time (laughs) I have this discussion with people... And it's <laughs> Troy and I are just poking fun. Like, seriously, I love Troy to death. But I've had many a conversations with people who love Lost, and I get why they love Lost. But as soon as you tell them why you don't like it, they say you just didn't get it. And it makes me want to punch babies. Not literally. Babies are delightful. I'm just saying, occasionally, it <laughs> makes me think about punching a plastic baby that's not real. Because that's absurd. That's like saying your fandom isn't as good as my fandom, and I can't stand when people do that. You didn't, you got what you wanted out of the show. I didn't get what was promised to me 
because that's what they promised to the fans. And they did not deliver. That gets a big thumb down. That thumb can't even go far enough down. I He broke it. Yeah. I saw it, guys. Snapped it in half. <laughs> On the same token, like, I don't consider it a flop either. Like, I do love the character portions of it. I think that that was beautifully handled and very touching. Jack's last moments are, are very heartbreaking. And his resolution with his dad is great. And Sawyer and everybody else is Kate... Although I feel like Kate was always shortchanged and always too reliant on the guys when she had a much more she interesting was. arc of her, her own. Her character was based on them. Yeah. When she was tied to Claire. Yeah, it's just, it was so, it got too complicated. Like, just let Kate be Kate. But aside from that, I, I like the character endings. It's the island stuff that just failed miserably, so it gets thumbs down. Woosa. <laughs> I'm not shocked at all. Well, I know. I've probably said everything I've I just that, said. I've seen that thumb down seven years now. Yeah. Troy, what's your debate? Do you yeah, have some what's your, follow-up? What's your vote? I mean, I, I got nothing left. My tank's empty. My my biggest issue with the show was the fact that ABC put those damn airplanes on the beach to this day. Yeah. The people that come up to me specifically and say they were dead the whole time, those are the people that I'm like, you didn't even watch the show. Yeah, that part's not true. 100%, they were not dead the whole time. That's right. not true. Because in the show, multiple times, like you hear words like, what happened, happened. It's the name of an episode. Uh, dead is dead like th- like that stuff is in the show already so it's like it's fishing and everything that happened on the island happened for real and i can understand why people are frustrated about getting island answers i think for me the answers that i wanted like why the hell is there a statue and now there isn't a statue and it's just a giant foot like those answers why is there a ship in the middle of the freaking jungle like those answers i got which i think were great how the island works the electromagnetism taking the plug out of the drain versus putting the plug back in the drain. I mean, I don't know if I needed those answers. I just thought it was kind of cool. Maybe okay. a little bit of, but you maybe didn't a little bit need of, it, but that doesn't mean that the rest right. of the audience didn't need it. Yeah. Or and, wanted. And, and, that, that, and that's why these, all these finales are controversial in their own right, because it's, it's a journey TV. Like, like Aaron said earlier, you, you go to a movie and something works because you've only invested two hours. You come out of, you know, how I met your mother with 104 <laughs> hours invested or lost with, you know, how many hours invested there? Cause there were some of those that were 24 episode seasons. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's the time investment and you have to say, I went on this journey. Did I get out of what I wanted on this journey? And these particularly nine episodes, especially I think are the ones where you go, man, was it really worth, was the juice worth the squeeze? And it's all about ROI, <laughs> but it's a lot about <laughs> expectation too. You know, it's, yeah. it's a matter of like, what did you want when you came into the journey? And if, and at that moment, maybe it's what you needed. And what's offered by the creators. I don't think that that should go missed either. Right. If you if you put a show together and you're the writer of that show, if you make it convoluted or you make it philosophical and you, you try to bring depth to it, you better have some answers to back it up. You better figure out what the mathematical equation is. You better figure out how it's possible that somebody's outside of their spacesuit breathing in air and not dying. I need answers to that stuff because I'm watching it. I feel like that was just a plug at one of those space movies I saw that did not answer it. Mary Poppins, <laughs> Princess Leia, episode eight. Oh, what's the one with Matt Damon? That movie did not have sufficient the Martian? The Martian? information. Yeah. Oh, God, that drives me crazy. Hey, I, know. I need all these things to survive. Oh, thank God they were already here on the Mars. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, there's there's an obligation for the creators to finish the product they've delivered. I don't believe that there's an obligation for them to give the audience the the answers that they or the the ending that they desired. And that's not what the controversy is here, which is why I appreciate the other side of it where fans say, no, I didn't like it. And it's not because I wanted a different ending. It's because, no, I didn't have enough conclusion to my ending. And that's two very different things. And I think there are a lot of lost fans that loved the ending that seem to perceive it as no, you didn't get the ending you wanted. And so you're just being pretentious. Leave it alone. They gave you what they wanted to give you what their vision was. And the people on the other side are saying no, that's not the truth, though, because that wasn't their vision the whole time. And if that wasn't their vision the whole time, that's not what I was promised in the beginning, the second season, the third season, the fourth season. So you better find a way to wrap that up. And they catered to one side of the audience. Yeah, and Troy and Troy knows this. But I won't name names, obviously, because I said I wouldn't. But remember, Troy, when I went to Comic-Con 
and I met with somebody for something that Troy was doing at the time. And I did basically met with one of the writers of another show who was a writer on Lost or worked with the writers of Lost. I'm not going to say exactly what that person did, but they said that at the beginning, the ending was going to be that they were in purgatory the whole time. They changed that at the end of season one because everybody guessed that. <laughs> so that was the initial plan. And that, that changed. That was, and it was always going to end with Jack's eye closing. Yeah. It was always going to end that like, Those were the two things that were the ten poles. I do think that's cool. Yeah. Like, but like I said, either way, the character endings I thought were, were great. Did, did you want to say anything else, Troy? I'm sorry. We no, I just, I, I just recently finished my fourth full rewatch. And I can say that I actually did not cry in the finale this time around. I actually cried. We a are so proud of I, you. I actually <laughs> cried at a different spot that I'd never cried at before. So I think it goes to show the ending that when it happened, because that's when I cried. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it goes to show like what you're experiencing in your life. in that moment, the episode I cried in was the one um, where uh, Ben asks for forgiveness from Lana and then son sees Jack and Hurley mm. for the first time come around the corner. Yeah. And in that moment, I was just like, man, like this guy who was a complete asshole his entire life was able to be forgiven by the one person who looked at Jacob as his father Mm -hmm. Like, how do I feel about that? And then when Sun sees Jack and Hurley after not seeing him for almost the whole season, I was like, COVID-19 isolation, like, oh my God, I miss my friends. And I like, <laughs> boom, lost it. So it's really, when you experience these finales, I think it does, it's really depending on where you are in your journey in life and then how you interpret your life experiences at the moment you see these finales. And I think that plays into whether you like it or not. I think he's trying to say, on a much simplified note, Aaron, that he's going to cry the next time he sees you. Uh-huh. No, because I see him three times a week. <laughs> yeah, we, we have video <laughs> Not here. in person. That's you don't get to touch him. That's okay. Whoa. whoa. I'm, I'm hey, fine. He doesn't get to touch me anyway. There's none Six of that going. Social distancing occurs no matter what. <laughs> but I just want to go on record for Lost. Two thumbs down, one thumb up. Is that what I'm understanding? Correct. Ah, ah, ah. I'm probably gloating a little too much over that because, you, you know, People love that show. I should start a rewatch just so Probably I can are. start hating the ending again. Well, you know what? You can share your thoughts in this episode or anything else in our Facebook group, The Hollywood Outsider, on Twitter at Buy Popcorn, or our site is TheHollywoodOutsider.com, or email feedback at TheHollywoodOutsider.com. Please rate and subscribe on your preferred podcast app. You can find Troy at Troy Heinrichs or on the podcast The Blacklist Exposed and Beyond Westworld, Amanda on Veronica's Marshmallows and Smirk and at Sink Into This, and me on Presenting Hitchcock, and I'm at Aaron Smirks. I thought we were already done. <laughs> Bye, everybody. All right, Bye that's going to do it. Remember, the next time you head to a theater, buy popcorn.